The Christmas lights make the camera a little bit cranky. But anyway, all right, I have got another speed paint battle mech, battle tech thing for you guys. Today, we're taking a look at the Lyran Guards. So welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and well, if you can't get past a crappy joke about my crappy set that lasts about five seconds, you're kind of watching the wrong YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, today though, Battle tech, well, let's hold this guy the correct way around. Battle tech speed painting. So speed painting is all about taking a series of simple techniques and showing you how you can paint up your miniatures in a relatively fast amount of time. In this case, these Lion Regard guys here took about 40 minutes each, maybe a little bit faster if you cut back here and there. But with that, Let's get ready to dive into the process, but two quick assumptions first. One is that you've already got the miniature primed to hit that 40 minute time limit. And two, you're, you're doing batch painting and you're not factoring in drying time. All right, let's go. Before we start the painting process, we gotta do the priming process and I'm using a black spray primer, in this case from Army Painters War Paint Series. And as usual, I also have my 3D printed priming tool. You can find a link to purchase the STL files for this tool down in the description of the show notes. It's over on my Etsy store. And for Battletech miniatures, I use the Dark Future clamp set to hold them in place while I'm doing the priming. Lyran guards are about 60% blue and 40% white. So our first step here is gonna to be to paint a gray dividing line between the two colors. I'm using Dawnstone Gray from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. The next step is to give a gray undercoat to all the white areas. White is a relatively difficult color to paint, especially on top of black, so that's why we're doing this step. I'm using more Dawnstone Gray, and I'm gonna paint in each of the armor panels to the best of my ability, but if you screw up and get a little bit of paint between the panels, don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. Conversely, if you miss some of the edges of the armor panels and leave them black, don't worry about that either. It'll help sell that battle damage look later on down the road. Now, once the gray is dried, we're gonna dry brush some metallic silver all over the mech to give a little bit more of a metallic undercoat. In this case, I'm using Shining Silver from Army Painters War Paint series. So now, using a dark blue color, in this case I've got Cantor Blue from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints, I'm going to fill in all the armor panels and mechanical areas on the blue side of the mech. I'm using an artificer layer extra small brush to accomplish this, and just like with the gray, I want to be careful to try not to get the paint in between the armor panels, but conversely, just like the gray, if you miss a little bit of the black, don't worry about it, battle damage, all that fun stuff. And in fact, the whole reason we just dry brushed that bright silver there was to allow some of that paint to show through, help sell the illusion this is a metal armor or some sort of metal structure versus being a plastic miniature. Even though the colors are not finalized yet, you can now already start to see the distinction between the blue and what will be the white. Now it's time to return to the white side of the battle mech. And what we're gonna do in here is take in a small dry brush. In this case, it's actually got a small dry brush from Army Painter's line of brushes. And I'm gonna very carefully apply lots of layers of dry brushing to this gray side of the back to make it white. I'm gonna allow a little bit of time between each layer to let it dry, and therefore this is gonna let me build up a relatively smooth white coating, and again, allow me to control exactly how much white paint I end up applying to the mech to give the desired look that I want. The advantage of dry brushing here is that it's a little bit faster and a little bit easier to paint each of the armor panels. And because dry brushing only affects the raised portions of the miniature, it's easier to keep the paint out of the recesses between the panels. With all the dry brushing, you probably muddied up the line between the blue and the white a bit. So I'm gonna go back in with a nice precise brush, in this case the Artificer Layer Extra Small Brush. I'm gonna clean that line up just a bit before moving on. To finish up the blue side of the armor, we got more dry brushing, but this time I'm only going to do one layer, and it's going to be of Altdorf Guard Blue from Games Workshop, Citadel line of paints. This is a little bit lighter shade of blue than compared to the Cantor Blue that I was using for the initial layer. So let's talk some finishing touches. First and foremost, way back at the start we applied some dry brushing to the silver, and let's be honest with you, that's probably all covered up at this point. So let's go back with the silver and add a little bit of dry brushing, a very small amount, just to make it look like there's some metal underneath that paint. 
And then while I've got the silver out, I'm also want to paint over some of the more interesting details that might be metal. I'm looking primarily at jump jets, but sometimes things look like cooling fins or heat sinks. I'll paint those metal as well. If you want to, you can give the weapons a metallic look. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. In general, with the actual official artwork of Battletech, the weapons are usually the colors of the particular unit and they don't stand out with metal, but if you want that look, go for it. Two more spawn details here with these mechs. The first is gonna take some black wash, and I'm gonna use that to kind of accent some of the areas where I think needs a little bit more contrast, a little bit more shadows. So these are some of the areas around armor panels where they're stacked on top of each other, where there's not a clear recess that's already got a bit of contrast to it. Additionally, if you did get some of the paint in between two armor panels, feel free to use the black wash at this point to kind of correct that mistake and make those armor panels look a little bit more separated, a little bit of contrast between them. Okay, so I really should sort out the steps in my head before I start counting them down because I'm usually wrong when I don't. There's actually now really two steps left. One is to take some black paint and we're gonna dry brush around the weapons and the jump jets to simulate heat scorching. For the final step, I'm gonna take a bright blue color. In this case, I've got Temple Guard Blue from Games Workshop, Citadel line of paints. And I'm gonna go in and paint the windshield of the battle mech. And with that, let's call our paint job done. There is a nice battle-hardened Lyran Guards paint scheme for Battletech. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Thank you guys all for watching. And if you want to see me paint up another Battletech unit, go ahead and post it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you type Clan Smoke Jaguar, well congratulations, you win. Absolutely nothing. But that will be the next Battletech painting tutorial I do here in the not too distant future. Until then, I've got some more robotic stuff and the usual things coming up here. So thank you guys all for watching for like the second time in about 15 seconds and have a great week.